Well, still in Kenya, ABC Bank continues to look for new markets that recently moved into Uganda through the acquisition of Capital Finance Corporation, which has been rebranded ABC Capital Bank. Joining us from Nairobi to tell us more is CEO Shamaz Savani. Shamaz, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Steve. How are you doing? Good, thank you. Very good, thanks. Uh, Shamaz, maybe just starting with the Ugandan move. Of course, that, that is historic now, but how have you had to adapt your model for that market and how have you settled into the Ugandan market? Uh, actually, this, the, the Ugandan opportunity came to us uh, quite timely with the East African community opening up. Uh, it is part and parcel of ABC Bank's plans to be expanding within the region, um, specifically with uh, 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 Kenya being one of the largest, or if not the largest, East African community member, which Uganda trades with. Apparently, 90% of uh, the imports within uh, the East African community come from Kenya into Uganda. So it was actually very opportune for us to be looking at an entry into the same country. And how, how wide is your exposure in Uganda and what sort of sectors are you covering? So would you be looking at trade flows, investment banking as well as retail banking? Correct. ABC Bank actually specializes very much on the trade finance, treasury and cash management aspects of banking. Um, our first focus is going to be to expand into those regions. Uh, looking into the mid-corporates and SMEs where we are going to be able to add value more towards the products that we have been very successful within the Kenyan market on the import and export finance, treasury and cash management, uh, followed by the retail uh, that's going to be the secondary strategy. But the primary will be the, the corporate and the mid-corporate level. And of, course and we have, SMEs, of course, we have the East, uh, East African Common Market Protocol coming into effect in July. So that must open more opportunities, not just in Uganda, but across the entire region. Yes, very, very much. Uh, that, that's very true, Steve. The, the East African Community Protocol is uh, something that's going to, and we're all expecting it to increase the trade tremendously. Uh, just a, uh, a couple of weeks ago, the, the, the parliament over here ratified uh, the Moi Kibaki signature. So basically, Kenya has signed on. We're looking at just changing the regulations in Kenya so that we're in line with the East African community. And once that is there, then uh, there, it is expected there's going to be a tremendous amount of flow of goods, services, money, labor. Uh, there's going to be an exponential growth, and uh, we are pretty, we're pretty excited about it. Are you looking at other countries also in the region, perhaps Tanzania, Rwanda, Burundi? Uh, we are very much a relationship-based bank, and uh, we, are, we actually grow where we feel that our customers need us. And we are growing within that. So as and when we feel that uh, the trade flows have reached a certain peak or certain kind of volume, which will require our value addition, then yes, we are looking at expanding within the East African community as well. Of course, there has been talk that you'd be looking at Tanzania, which is in the East African community, but also South Sudan, which is a, a largely unbanked market. And lots of banks are looking at that market for, for future growth. Sorry, can you repeat the question? Would you also be looking at markets like South Sudan, which is largely unbanked at this stage, but we do see some banks making tentative steps into that market, such as Equity Bank? Yes, we're, we're open to all opportunities that are coming in. Um, it is uh, quite a virgin territory right now, but so our primary focus is going to be basically where our trade flows are strong right now. Sudan's trade flows are growing by the day, so definitely that, is, that will be on the cards in the near future. Now, you, you mentioned the focus was really going to be on trade flows, investment banking. Retail banking, though, we're looking at a, a largely unbanked population across, the, across East Africa. What sort of opportunities do you see there for a bank such as yourself? Um, there, are, uh, uh, <laughs> there are quite a lot, actually. I'm just wondering where to start from over here. Uh, Kenya specifically actually has uh, provided new regulations and laws that is going to allow banks to reach out to the unbanked uh, population or the people that are on, uh, should we say, alternative uh, banking solutions uh, such as SACOs and merry-go-rounds, etc., uh, with the agency banking concept, which we feel is going to be very, very successful in Kenya. Uh, the regulations are just out, and as soon as that is something that's tested with, it is something that's going to be rolled out in the rest of the East African community countries. So I feel that the unbanked will be coming into the banking arena but very much using the technology platform of SMS banking, internet banking, as well as alternative delivery channels, which have picked up very, very well in East Africa uh, compared to other markets. I mean, would the, would the government be providing some security to banks who are entering into the unbanked territory? I think uh, the regulators have actually given the right kind of guidelines and the right kind of uh, laws to 
protect the institutions as well as the consumers as well. Uh, the Central Bank of Kenya, for example, vets each and every agent or each and every product that comes out to make sure that it is in compliance uh, and it is sustainable in the long term. Of course, we have seen the central bank putting some pressure on the banking sector to start cutting interest rates to consumers, really just following suit from the, from the rate cuts that the, the central bank has put through to the banking sector. Banks have finally capitulated and are lowering interest rates. Why has it taken so long, though, to cut interest rates for consumers in Kenya? That's a very, very good question. In fact, uh, this is uh, quite timely as well, but it does take time. There's a lot of structural costs and a lot of long-term costs that the banks have kind of uh, contracted into, specifically the cost of funds, uh, specifically last year when a lot of the, the government instruments were coming in and competing with banking deposits in the terms of commercial bonds, as, uh, treasury bonds, infrastructure bonds. They were paying extremely high interest rates and the banks had to compete with those for deposits. So those deposits were locked in with consumers at at least uh, extremely high rates. Now with the interest rates coming down, we are expecting that as those deposits mature, they'll be maturing at lower rates, reducing the cost of funds for banks, which will eventually translate into lowering the lending rates, which we're seeing right now. So personally, I do see this trend continuing, but it is going to be uh, an evolutionary tract as we go forward this year. Osmaz, you've, you've talked a bit about your growth strategy going into Uganda and other countries you might be looking at in the East African region. How about at, in your home market in, in Kenya? Um, I mean, you've been looking at agency banking, also diversification into insurance and investment banking. What sort of growth strategy do you have in place on your home turf? Um, specifically for our home market, we're celebrating 25 years in Kenya. And uh, within our group companies, we do have ABC Bank, we have got ABC Capital, which is a uh, stock broker with a seat on the Nairobi Stock Exchange. Within the group, we also have ABC Insurance Brokers. Um, and we are looking at providing a financial supermarket solution to the client and a one-stop shop. Uh, the idea is to give convenience, to give uh, innovation, and to give value, add, value addition to the client at the end of the day. So yes, looking at all of these aspects, we are looking at the compliance issues and the regulatory issues. As soon as those are cleared, we are looking at offering a tremendous amount of services, uh, crossing, uh, basically going across the financial services to, to the consumer. In regards to agency banking, yes, that is something that we are very, very much looking at very strongly. Uh, we are very much uh, into the internet, uh, sorry, not the internet, but basically the full ICT platform as compared to the bricks and mortar platform. And I feel the agency banking allows that. Um, the rules and regulations have just come out. We're studying it. And yes, we are going to go quite strongly into that into the future. Well, you mentioned the compliance and the regulatory issues that you have to look at in your own markets. As you expand into other markets, though, you have to take other regulations and compliance on board as well. I mean, how, how similar are compliance and regulations across the East African community, just given the new protocol? The central banks of the East African community, all the governors and the central banks have been meeting over the last couple of years trying to harmonize as much of the regulations as possible. But obviously there are uh, domestic nuances that you need to appreciate and the domestic cultures and the requirements. So that is a challenge. Uh, it is very much, uh, there's an increased cost element to that to make sure that the regulations and compliance issues are uh, totally complied with within the different countries, also to understand and to appreciate how to be within the compliance, as well as to take advantage of the opportunities that come within the regulatory framework and look at the central banks and the regulators as your partners in your growth uh, going forward. So it is a challenge, but uh, I think it is the best for the uh, institutions and the consumers at large. Ashmaz, just before we end off, we've been talking about the increase in tourist numbers coming into, into uh, Kenya and, of course, economic growth starting to recover. What sort of growth are you expecting in that economy and how are you positioning yourselves to, to benefit from it? Uh, if we exclude any of the, the political uh, in, uh, instances that may uh, have any impact, like, for example, we are expecting to go ahead with a referendum, and if we exclude those kind of issues, I think the economy is very robust. We are looking at uh, between 4 and 5% growth this year, and uh, we're expecting that to increase next year as well, as far as GDP growth is concerned. There is not just tourism increase, there's actually been a lot of uh, increase in infrastructure development as well, which is creating a lot of value addition and uh, the, the, the multiplier effect that comes into the economy. Uh, there is tremendous amount of growth coming in terms of real estate, infrastructure, tourism, increase in production in tea and coffee. Uh, we're also looking at increased trade within the East African community, as we spoke of earlier, and also generally within the Comesa region of uh, Africa. 
So Kenya, I think, is uh, positioned itself quite well. And with the interest rates coming down, there should be increased in credit to the consumers as well as to the corporates and investors. We're quite confident that GDP growth is increasing and will continue increasing uh, in the near future.